Northwest Trains and this is the fourth update on the uh, Micro Heritage Layout and Museum and um, as you can see I've done a little bit of work on the engine shed area and uh, well I suppose it'll be the main museum building area if we just uh, carefully lift this up uh, I sh showed the basic building structure started last time round just made out of um, bits of plastic card and bits of plastic uh, in the shape of girders and RSJs. So I just um, you know, pieced them together one night and then it was only going to be a temporary thing. We thought no, I'll carry on with it and um, see what it looks like. So what I've done there behind is I've glued some um, brick paper onto the back seam. Uh, I've glued the brick paper on here. I've also fitted some windows and doors. Uh, I've got doors here from scale model scenery for the um, engine shed. I've still got to paint them up, but they're the basic doors. They're going to go there like that. Um, the windows and doors, I found a, um, a Seth and Pico. I've had various different ones, but I didn't really have any that suited the industrial look because because it's going to be like a museum uh, stroke heritage centre I wanted to create the effect of it's an original set of buildings that would have been used as a um, maybe on industrial railway or just a locomotive works but also have a modern feeling so we got modern windows and doors put in um, so basically I've got a set of these from Hatton's there's all sorts in this set, all sorts of bits and bobs. I've only used a small amount of them. So uh, we've got a good variety of things. I'll probably use some of the guttering later on. Because um, I want to do an interior to this shed. Uh, I'm not going to permanently fix the roof. I'm going to have a tour and lift off, hopefully. Um, so moving on from there, I did paint all this base grey. And I've just dry brushed um, all this area in uh, black, just to give it the effect of um, general dirt and grime that builds up on these uh, locomotive sheds. I've also, um, I'll zoom in a bit later on, put some polyfiller in between the track here and painted it black. That's as far as I got really. Over here, just an ex as an example, because um, I'm going to have a sign for the museum building either here or maybe on here. So um, visitors can come out of any of these doors and have a bit of a viewing point of the uh, demonstration track so that's basically what it is we've got an engine shed with a locomotive works and um, the other end we've got a small platform we'll come to in a sec so um visitors to the museum can enjoy a little train ride as well as um a small narrow gauge railway so the idea being is people can come out of say this door here for instance out into the yard you can walk along and view the trains going up and down and they also go to the platform down the other end where there will be a, um, a small narrow gauge museum um, we'll come to that in a sec so I'll, uh, I'll swing the camera around and uh, we'll take a look at the other side of the layout okay so this end of the layout we have our um, narrow gauge track down, I decided to go ahead with it in the end so I thought it would add a bit of extra interest. So um, what I'll probably do to it I think is add a, a shuttle so it can automatically go backwards and forwards. So when running the layout I can just focus on the double o gauge side of it. So it adds a bit of interest so I've created a bit of a straight section here so it's enough for a little o 4 loco and a little four wheel coach. And they add a little bit of a curve to the line to make it more interesting. In the front here, I intend to uh, got some old uh, Parkside Dundas slate wagon kits. 
So I've uh, built a few of them and roughed them up a bit, uh, rust them up. And um, what I've seen on some narrow gauge railways, like the West Lancashire Railway, they've actually uh, filled them with flowers or plants. So um, I'll do something like that. Um, just have a look along the back here. I'm going to do like the front of a building. So this will be the narrow gauge shed and museum bit. So I'm literally just going to do the same the other side, just um, put some brick paper onto some cars, uh, maybe some engine shed doors on it, and um, an, a normal uh, door for people to walk in and out of, and then that will be that side of it. Then it gives the people somewhere to walk to and get train rides to and from, from one end of the centre to the other. So this is a small platform I've made, I've made it designed it to basically suit uh, a small four-wheel coach and a small tank engine like the Andrew Barkley here so it's just long enough for that we'll also use um, brake vans so brake van rides as well um, the platforms basically what I've just made out of uh, matchsticks and um, the little splints that you used to use for Bunsen burners back in school and all I've done is I've just playing around one night, same as the engine shed, I just glued them together. Um, dry brushed a couple of layers of brown paint on it just to give it the weathered decking effect. And obviously the white line. And uh, just stuck a, a fence panel onto it. And that's it, that's finished. And then here, from uh, scale model scenery, we've got these nice little um, steps for the platform. So I've got another set of them, so I'll probably put one set either side of the platform. I'll probably put one here as well, so that people can come on and off. Um, the next thing is uh, this little signal box I thought would be ideal for the yard area. So uh, I've just built it up, just a little wills kit. Um, I've got to do some more painting on the inside, but you can see the lever frame there. I'll probably put a figure in there and uh, maybe even a light in the future. I'm not sure whether to put lighting on the layout yet or not, but that's for another day. And um, we can just move on to the middle here. Uh, I've just got some railway sleepers there at the moment. So I'm just going to um, basically uh, put some bits of junk and bits of scrap metal and things there. Some used rails. And that'll be the junk corner that you always see in these heritage centres. So the next um, phase to do now really is to ballast the track, now all the point motors and everything are in and tested, um, ballast and weather the track a bit more and uh, I'll put some, I'll try and do some um, static grass in between the ballast and stuff because like I say a lot of the sidings especially on these sensors always get um, overgrown and a bit worn looking. If you can just go on the track here, you can see where I've done a bit of weathering on it. I've used a sleeper gram and I've used a bit of rust paint on the rails. I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm happy with the way it's coming along. Bit of a slow process as always with uh, whenever I start something. But I'm happy with it so far. Right, just another little thing I wanted to point out was um, how we compare locomotive sizes. So... A lot of these little railway museums and heritage centres have train rides from these little Andrew Barclays. And uh, despite the size, they are quite powerful little engines. Last time I was at the Lakeside and Haverquake Railway, um, a four-coach train was pulled by one of those. And um, But yeah, these locos don't look very big when you have them on your main layout. But compare that to that, it's actually a pretty, pretty big loco. So... Um, like I said, that's why I was mainly focused on these little Andrew Barclays and Peckets and the little Dapol dock shunts that we have here on a little layout like this because they look a bit more to scale with it and also they take a little bit longer to go around the track than a bigger loco, obviously. But yeah, it's um, interesting to compare the sizes when you got them side by side. So um, I'm going to end the video with a little running session. So... Um, of course, let me know when you in the comments uh, what you think. Do you like it? Do you, do you not like it? Um, any ideas you might have, um, let me know. Um, and also like to say thanks for all the previous comments on all the other videos that we've had. Uh,
people always give helpful suggestions in and um, they're, well, they're very much appreciated and uh, thanks for taking the time to watch them. So um, thanks again and uh, I'll see you on the next video.